Hey, what's up? My name is Mike Yakovlev, and I'm a professional 3D and 2D artist. And if you've been following my work for a while, you'll know that I've been recreating iconic anime scenes. Like, sometimes it's Studio Ghibli, sometimes it's Akira. Well, mostly it's been Akira lately, but uh, I'm a huge fan of that movie. Recently, I did this one. And I'm gonna show you how I put it together. I've gotten a lot of questions like what assets that I use, all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna jump straight into Blender and talk you through how I created that scene. All right, so here's the blend file. From the first glance, it probably looks like a lot's going on. I just have a ton of windows open. I like having uh, like the shader and the, because this was an animation, I like having the timeline open and all this kind of stuff if I wanna make adjustments along the way. But really the most important thing is this window on the left. So this is like what the camera sees. And this over here on the right is just like my free, you know, looking at the whole scene. So let me see if I can select the camera. So here's the camera and this is the whole scene. It, you can see it's inside of a cube, which is the volume cube. You know, I've talked about how I do the volume and everything in Blender. Uh, if you look down here, it is just a volume scatter node plugged into the volume. I think that volume scatter node works better for me than principal principal volume. I don't know, it feels like a little bit easier to control and uh, there's a little bit more like, I don't know. Yeah, I think that's mostly, it just feels a little bit easier to control. And I just always use it, so I don't I don't really try anything else. These buildings in the background are buildings from my uh, building pack. You can I'll leave a link down to all that stuff if you guys want to check that out. But yeah, these have like very basic. If I jump into the texture view, you can kind of see how it looks. You can see the volume cube in action, and it is kind of slowing down my scene a little bit. So I'm gonna see if I can turn that off. So I'm just gonna go over here and just remove it. At least that's what I. Nope, that's not it. I don't know what I did. Oh, I selected something else. Here we go, cube, of course. So that's the volume cube. And then I used EV to render this and my EV settings are pretty straightforward. Uh, if I go here, I'm using Blender 4.0. So EV settings are mostly the same, I think. I'm not really doing anything specific here. You can see the bloom is kind of where a lot of the zhuzh is coming from. And then just ambient occlusion, screen space reflections. The usual stuff that you turn on if you're using Eevee. And then here is the camera angle. So I'm gonna select the camera and show you what the camera's in. There's a bit of motion to the camera. Once, you know, I've kind of built out the scene and then with the camera, there's just, like you can see very subtle amount of motion. So if I go back, it's up here and it's just kind of coming down and uh, just panning down onto our character on the bike here. This is uh, all of the all of these foreground assets, these buildings, they're from a big medium small pack called I think Tokyo Alley. And I got that recently on their like Cyber Monday deal. It comes with like an asset browser ready file, which really makes my life a lot easier, but you can kind of get an idea of like, it's a ton of stuff, it's buildings, it's it's everything. And I think they're even adding more content to it soon. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the stuff that I got coming down. But yeah, I use, you can kind of see, I use the same buildings over and over again, but each, each side of the building has so much detail that you can kind of get away with using the same building more than once. So I have this one here with the yellow kind of face and then the same again, but on the reverse side and I have the building here again. But since you're only seeing, if you look on the camera here, you're only really seeing this side of it. So it looks different. And the front of this building is covered by all these other buildings. So you don't even notice it really, especially with the lighting and everything going on. You don't notice that it's yellow. It, you know, it looks like a different color. Yeah, so I just kind of like looked at the original clip and just try to get it close because I noticed there's like this really bright city structure in the background and then in the front layer there's these like more detailed alleyways. These buildings here are doing all of the work in heavy lifting in terms of you know selling the alleyway atmosphere and vibe. Even this street is from the asset pack so it's just the same street duplicated twice and just moved around. This fence thing, it's missing its textures right now, but this was from Polyhaven. And they release free assets. I really recommend checking them out and using them. Not, you know, not sponsored by them or nothing like that. I just use them a lot and I have their add-on and everything. This is essentially the, the, the block out. There's really nothing going on outside of the screen or outside of the camera. It's all just focusing on the, the parallax, the overlapping, simple in the back, and then gets 
stronger and more detailed as you get closer in and yeah just use the pack you know like brought some cables in this is all from the pack like a lot of this stuff is from the pack so it really is just all right there ready for you to use uh so this is a bike that i got from sketchfab so it's not identical like brand wise and then this model itself is also from the tokyo city pack they release these they have these people here if i go down to people yeah they have a lot of like static crowds but then they also have like rigged characters which you can customize change the color of everything so i just went in it, it came with like this hoodie so i just went in and kind of adjusted the shader to make it green instead of i think i went in here yeah and it just added curves to make it make the, the color of the hoodie greenish so so that it looked a little bit like uh like tetsuo yeah that's the scene let's uh let's try to hop into rendered view so hopefully this doesn't slow down too much because it is dense like the one thing about these models, maybe the downside is that there's a lot of pieces and each piece has a texture and it's very, very detailed. So you can get a lot out of just like using very little uh, if you start populating a scene and making a city with it. And then on top of that, trying to make an animation, it can start to kind of weigh heavy on your scene. Like you can see here, so I have 12, it's using 11.3 VRAM. And you know, this is, this gets up there. So as I was working on this, it was getting denser and denser and heavier. And one thing I want to point out is like, you'll notice that a lot of the people that you see online that have like these crazy hyper-realistic renders, like rendered in cycles, all this detail, all this stuff is packed in and it's an animation. They have a lot of gpu power just if you can sometimes look down here while somebody's working on a scene the people that i look at have twice the vram that i have they have like 24 gigs sometimes even more and their scenes are often getting pushed up to around that limit so just you know like try to be aware of something like that like if you if you're feeling like your scenes aren't looking as good compared to what's out there sometimes it's because they just have a better computer and they can pack more detail into their scene. Uh, higher quality textures, like 4K textures will really eat up your VRAM, all this kind of stuff. And 4K textures will make things look more realistic because there's just more detail packed into them, more assets, more geometry, all of this kind of stuff um, at the end of the day will make your scene look more realistic and more like, just like there's more going on. So just kind of consider that when you're ultimately comparing yourself to just like the Instagram art out there. Because I think about that, you know, this is how I feel. And this is what these are the things that I think about. Anyway, I can talk about all this stuff for a long time, but let's get back to where we're at here. Uh, I'm going to try to go into render view so you can see the lighting. All right, cool, cool, cool. Lighting came through. And again, with the lighting, I tried to match it to the reference. And so what I noticed was in the reference or in the scene, there, the background is, let me see if I can turn off this bloom. So the back had all of, had like this really blue light on it. So this is just a simple uh, area light that I made into a disc. Usually they come in as like squares or something, you know, turn off the contact shadows. Uh, sometimes you can turn off just the shadows. Uh, Eevee is really fun in this way. Like I've been using it a lot for recreating these anime scenes. And a lot of times people say that they look like they have like an anime shader on them or they look hand-drawn and they're not. And I'm not even trying to make them look that way. I think it's just the way that Eevee does shadows. Like the shadows are very, you know, there's not a ton of global illumination. So the shadows are dark and the highlighted areas are light and there's kind of not too much in between. So that I think adds to the effect of it looking like some kind of anime shader or something. Um, but yeah, so in terms of lighting, let me see if I can show the lighting. I don't have a ton. Uh, a lot of the lighting I have is like this up lighting, this like street, this mimic street lighting. So this lighting down here is really, really high power because I want it to be lighting and hitting all of these buildings here. And you can see even in the back, some of the buildings are clipping into each other, but ultimately you don't really see that in the final render. So I can kind of get away with it. The other thing, and this is something I've been doing in my uh, earlier Akira renders, is giving the buildings themselves some motion. So I don't even know if in this final one it's that noticeable, but it's it's added like this additional layer of motion and parallax to everything outside of just the camera moving alone. Because once I rendered, I did my first render with just the camera moving and it felt like I was just scrolling on a still frame. Like it didn't need to be even a animation. You know, I figured like if I'm gonna do an animation, let me at least move the camera a bit so, so you can kind of see it's going down and there's a bit of like parallax effect. So if we get a side view, you can see that the camera, it just goes down and it's and it pans down and 
it does add, I think, a lot to the, or at least a little bit to the, the sense of depth and stuff like that. So the building's moving. Uh, I think even some of these uh, mid-ground buildings are also moving a little bit. Yeah, you can see them. See this one kind of scrolling up. And it's just one of those things that as the camera comes down, the buildings move up. So it really feels like the camera is sinking into this like really, uh, into like this deep alleyway among these like really tall buildings. So it just adds a little bit more vertigo effect. The buildings are getting taller as you move down. I don't know, just something I've been messing around with and worth a try, I think, uh, if you want to do it in your animations. The background lighting is this green color. The middle ground here is this blue, just a single uh, light here. And then I have sometimes a lot of, as we get closer to the main area, there's a lot of shadow. So I need to fill in that with like these little fill lights. And you can see there's a ton of lights just like in this one area alone. You can kind of see that there's a good bit of lights. And a lot of these lights I have just set to point lights and area lights and little things to cast specific colors of light on the shadowy area. So I did want this area to have like a red light because that's how it was in the anime. Let me actually hide this. So there's a little light here that's red and it has uh, an EV. I don't know if you can do this in, in cycles, but in EV you can set custom distances to things. So that means how far the light reaches the objects that are around it. So if I set the distance high, you can see that it kind of goes onto the street a little bit. And if I set it back to three where it was, it's only kind of like localized. It's very video gamey. Like if you look at video games, you'll see their lights are only touching the areas that are around them. And that's mostly for performance, for like light baking and stuff. But uh, you can do that in, in, in Eevee and you can really control that, which I love. You know, it gives you a lot more control over the lights, art direction, things like that, uh, and what light reaches. So I have this uh, spotlight on our main character. You know, again, it doesn't make sense. In the render, you can see there's no object here. There's no like street light or anything that could be casting that light. But I think for like art direction purposes and just for putting the focus where you want the focus to be, it's really good. So that's what I wanted. I wanted you to look here and not really anywhere else. And I still wanted it to look dark and still lit, you know, like it, it's, it's kind of like this back and forth balance. Uh, I have this other lamp here, this area light that's green. So it's a little bit darker. It's not as saturated. It's not as bright as the colors that are in the foreground. It's a little bit colder. So it's almost like the colors in the foreground are warmer and the colors in the background are colder. So just doing more things to sell the sense of depth and translate different areas of the scene. So every area has its own lights and color associated with it. So I hope that kind of gave you a good idea of how I made this scene. If you have any questions or suggestions or anything like that, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to support more stuff like this, subscribe. That's the best way to do that. Follow me on Insta, all that kind of stuff, Patreon. Uh, it all helps me in the long run. I'm going to be doing a lot more scenes like this. I want to do a couple more Akira ones. The other ones that I haven't done, I've only been putting them off because they're just massive. They're massive scenes. But I've got some ideas and um, do other animes too. I'm excited to do more. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye.